So let's just go over uh, graphing log base 4 of x. All right. Just like le exponential, I went over the parent graph with the logarithmic. All right. So when we're looking at a logarithmic equation, we have to say we're going to do the exact same thing we did exponential. Take the parent graph that we can use. <coughs> so I'll write that over here. Parent. And the parent graph of a logarithmic equation, log base b of x, right? Because remember, logarithmic comes from the exponential. <coughs> They're inverses of each other. So if I was going to take a look at this and I say, oh, well, what does the parent graph look like? Oh, well, I kind of remember Mr. McLogan. He was flipping it over that x equals y line. And instead of the y-intercept being at 1 comma 0, there was no y-intercept. And now we had an x-intercept at 1 comma 0. It looks something like that, right? And just from that parent graph, you guys should know that the domain is now from 0 to infinity. The range is from uh, negative infinity to infinity. And the asymptote is at x equals 0. Right? That's the basic information. And just by looking at the graph, and really, all you guys really need to know is that it has that x, inter that it has the x intercept at 1 comma 0, and you can find the rest of the information. All right? Yes? For the exponential, you're right. That, you mean? Yeah. That's for exponential. That was la two class periods ago. Last class period, we went over this, which, remember, is the inverse. Right? OK. So yeah, we're just dealing, we've, we've learned two of them. But the process to graphing them is going to be the same. The main important thing is you, understand, you need to understand the transformations. So we look at this and we say, do these have any transformations? Is there any shifting, reflecting? Anything going on? No. So that's pretty cool. So what we can do is we can just go and take a look at, well, we can just go and take a look at using a um, table. But the one thing we know is that since there's no transformations, we know that we have a y-intercept at 1. But let's go ahead and let's see here. We can do um, 1. And let's just do an xy table. Right? And we say that we know it's going to have 1. Well, let's take a look at that. y equals log base 4 of 1. Right? If I plug in a 1, that means 4 to the y equals 1. What does 4 have to be? I'm sorry, what does y have to be? 0. That's why you know 1's x and 0. Right? Now, probably the next number you say, all right, well, we're going to have to be labeling, we're going to have to be raising y or 4 to a power to be able to find my y. So um, what, do you, what, what would be another good number to raise 4 to that we could get the answer? Uh, well, yeah, I'd like actually, um, well, we already have 0. Yeah, we already have 1 to get it to there. But uh, well, you could do 16. But what about what would we have to do to get it to be to 4? We could just raise it to 1, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. So 16 works as well. There's no problem with 16. However, I don't really want to do 16 ticks, all right? I'm sorry. Um, so, but what if I wanted to get y to be 4 or to be x to be 4? Therefore, y would have to be 1. Right? So now we have two points, 1 comma 0, and then 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. So you guys could do that. And then if there were transformations, let's say it was like, you know, the, now the function was minus 2 you know, or plus 5 or negative, whatever. Then you can apply the transformations. Do you see what I'm saying? But there are no transformations for this. So we just leave it like that. But that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. You guys can graph the parent function. And it would take a look. It would be different. You would have to check. You would have to change if there was a 2 there. But you guys just graph the parent function, then apply the transformations. Make sense? All right. So now there's no transformations. So our domain is going to be the same as the original parent graph, 0, comma, infinity. The range is going to be negative infinity to infinity. The asymptote did not change. We didn't shift the graph left or right. So the asymptote is x equals 0. Question? 
because it's a vertical line. You can, um, this graph is approaching this vertical line, OK? And um, the best thing I can do to show you that as well is we have to find the x-intercept or find the, yeah, the x-intercept. Um, but the best thing I can do to show you that is if let's convert this over to exponential form. So I'm going to change this to a y. y equals log base 4 of x. If you guys, log base 4 of x. If you guys rewrite this in exponential form, 4 to the y equals x. Right? Again, what they're, what they're trying to say is, notice how, why is it not y equals 0? Because can you, do, can you put 0 in for y? Right? Can you put a 0 in for the y? You can't raise a number to a power? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You can put 0 in for y, right? No, we did this. We already had 0 in for y. We already have an example of 0y. So therefore, y equals 0 cannot be, that doesn't make sense to have an asymptote, right? Because that's where the graph approaches. However, let me ask you the question. Can x equal 0? Can I raise this to a power to give me 0? No, because if you raise it to 0, that gives you 1, right? So you see how it's impossible for me to raise 4 to a power to get 0? That's why x equals 0 is our asymptote. Does that make help out? Okay. So just remember for exponential, y equals 0. Logarithmic, x equals 0. All right, now we still need to find the x-intercept. So to find the x-intercept, all right, um, to find the x-intercept, oh, to find the x-intercept, what does y have to be equal to? Or the output value have to be equal to? Yeah, yeah just like we did linear equations. Take f of x, set it equal to 0. Now, there was another thing we learned. Besides the properties of logarithms, and besides graphing logarithm equations, what was the one other thing that we learned how to do to convert from? Yeah, exponential to logarithmic form, right? So when you guys get to this, and we're going to get to a lot more of these, but here you're kind of stuck. What do I do here, right? It's you have 0 equals log base 4 of x. <coughs> you need to solve for x. I, you can't just plug in your calculator and get a value in for your x. What, how are you going to solve for x? Well, the only thing I can say, ladies and gentlemen, and I know a lot of you are just like, Ms. McLeod, I just don't understand logs. I don't really understand what it says, what it means, and goes through. Convert it to exponential. Convert this exponential. It's 4 to the 0 equals x. And that gives us an answer we already knew by our graph, which x equals 1. Okay? But that's going to become very important when you guys are even doing transformations as well. To look at that. What? You remember from last year? Yeah.